agree that bad of you. I'm glad to agree the good way. First of all, I would thank for Dr. John and Dr. Chen for giving me the opportunity for this presentation. And now I would introduce my experience in California. The topic of presentation is uh, optimizing fumigation. Sir? Sir, could you speak up, please? We do not have the benefit of light from here. You mean loud? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, the topic from my presentation is uh, optimizing fumigation rate and uh, depth and plus uh, plastic bill using for the strawberry protection the risk bed. Uh, my name is uh, Chi. Uh, people here call me Ray. And, uh, and first, I would give a brief introduction of myself. I got my PhD in Switzerland and mastered the bachelor in China. And, uh, my background is agronomy and science. And my working experience started at the six to now. I work for UC Davis, beginning as a postdoc, and now as a, a secretary scientist. And previously, I have experience working in Switzerland at the different uh, East Asia. And also, I have experience working in China, in Chinese agriculture, uh, academy of and science. And in this project, I am a PI. And uh, I actually, my role one is in another is in USDA ARS as a visitor. So my project is a collaborative project, and uh, so in this project collaborator is uh, Doctor uh, Dobrik <laughs> from, <laughs> from uh, he also from uh, University of California, but another system is uh, agriculture at the resource. And uh, Dr. Sudan Dow, she's a soil scientist from USDA. US. And Dr. Brett Hassan, he's a wheat scientist, so extension specialist for UC Davis. And uh, Dr. Jose Aswan, he's the extension specialist. Uh, he worked for many years for the soil fumigation. And uh, Dr. Jim Garrick, he's a plant physicist, he went to USDA. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Now, uh, I would introduce a uh, rich bed strawberry for California. Uh, California strawberry are made in the rich bed system. Uh, this rich bed with uh, standard PE field. And uh, like uh, Luke mentioned, because uh, California strawberry, they, the field grows strawberry every year. So there's a lot of problem for the pest. So usually, uh, strawberry depend on the soil fumigation to control the soil pest. And uh, so far, around 50%, uh, 55% strawberry treated with uh, soil fumigation. The soil fumigation is applied through the ear tape, uh, named as uh, drip fumigation. And uh, <coughs> this uh, bromide, uh, not sure if you're familiar with uh, fumigant. So, metro bromide is a very fumigant. But uh, later on, they find that they have some uh, problem and destroy the old rule. So, it's the first out in the developed country since two sides. And uh, after metro bromide is out, and uh, this uh, new al alternative fumigant, another pest infested field. The area as the number is increasing. And also, uh, so far, still have a weight problem. And, uh, we found the major problem usually and it come from the center of that or the side. Now, uh, but uh, soil fumigation. And soil fumigation is a water rule to control the soil bowl pest. And the many high value crop uh, did the uh, soil fumigation. It's pre plant fumigation. 
for the annual crop is uh, strawberry or tomato. A perennial crop like uh, grape wine, almond. So far, is uh, this chemical name was 3 d and this chemical name is CP. They uh, together try to replace the methyl bromide. The however, use of fumigant is uh, highly limited by the government to agency because uh, fumigant. Uh, fumigant emission can uh, pollute air and uh, in the extreme case if the high will bring the expulsion risk to the human So the California government and also the federal government, they have a lot of regulation on use of fumigation. And uh, the fumigant in color, this is a metal bromide. This is how the chemical structure. And this is a metal iodine. So far, the metal brine already fished out. And the metal iodine is out of the California market because there are a lot of environmental issues. And people worry about the cancer all this kind of problem. And the chloropicry, this is also a 3D. Um, still, is a major one to use in field. The new compound named the dimethyl dioxide is DMDS. Uh, this chemical somehow uh, people believe is a biofilm because many crops can produce this uh, chemical for mustard. And uh, so far, uh, still the registration in California, but I believe in Florida, they are able to use in the market. <coughs> and the major field application is uh, two methods. One is a uh, shape injection. The idea is uh, apply the fish in the deep soil from uh, depend on the crop. For example, strawberry is uh, applied to the 30 centimeters, 12 inch. And for the trees or grapes, usually go to 45 centimeters. Sometimes it will go deeper as uh, 60 centimeters. And after the fumic gas in the field, then quickly pressed the soil surface, then uh, we had the uh, emission control method, for example. And uh, another popular one is uh, drip fumigation, like, uh, uh, which I will introduce mainly in yeah. And uh, after the fumigate apply in the soil, uh, the fumigate is a volatile compound. As after the soil is quickly diffused through the whole soil and uh, they distribute in the three phase solid, liquid, and uh, also soil air. And uh, the, the ideal area is uh, fumigate stay in the soil all the time. But uh, there's uh, two uh, problems. One is volatile is a uh, uh, fumigant emission. So because the uh, fumigant gas, they are very easy to go up. So when crop soil surface, they will pollute air at least. And uh, this is um, uh, our major work I show this. And also another potential is leaching. But for leaching in California, and not uh, in uh, usually California weather is uh, very good. And uh, the leaching only happens when the other the activation uh, with heavy rain. So we are the soil fumigant emissions our major target. And uh, so far the fumigant emission control method uh, I can summarize is the four kinds. It's a plastic tarpin. So all the soils we cover the plastic field and put up this barrier. So we expect the gas will be hold in the other. And uh, another is a spray uh, spit. It's kind of chemical. And people find this chemical can react with fumigant and change from volatile compound to the non-volatile compound. And uh, the third method that uses irrigate is a sprinkler. After a fumigant applied and uh, uh, apply water and uh, build up a, a saturated layer of the top uh, soil and try to stop the fumigant emission. Fumigant is uh, very slow to uh, 
water that cross the soil potato. And uh, also apply manure on the soil surface. However, all these four methods only work in the certain condition, not every time. For example, for the tarpin, so far the standard the PEV actually work not so good and the fumigant still can crop the tarp. Particularly if the soil is very dry. And uh, some data show that case even uh, uh, covered and uh, compared to bare soil, no difference. And this chemical really works. The problem is a new, new product after the reaction. We do, still don't know if there is uh, any other chemical, environmental uh, issue, but uh, at least if it's a uh, change color, it also gives a very bad smell. Uh, for the irrigation, it works. So after, whenever the film, uh, irrigation stops, and when the water drains down, the film can be immediately come again and uh, it's uh, very high. And for the manure, only a very high amount it works. For the no, no. So, is there an ideal soil that you look for when you're applying this? The temperature? Uh, no. Uh, film, film gauge California all the season applied, but the uh, usually the temperature shouldn't be too too high. <clears throat> and for the manure, even up to the organic farming situation, can control, but uh, still. The effect, effect is limited. Uh, this four method actually summarizes all the methods uh, uh, to control the emission. Uh, not only for the respect, also for the fumigation, like sick fumigation. And uh, for the respect uh, fumigation, oh, uh, the, because respect there is uh, two parts. One is a uh, uh, plastic covered bag. This is a, a one concern how to control the emission there. Also, another is uh, the furrow. The furrow is uncovered. And uh, so far for the respect of plastic tarping, still the major method to control the emission. And for the furrow, uh, usually the farmer apply water, all the, that chemical, take it control the emission. And uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, the standard P film, not effective emission, and uh, now uh, the trap is to use a low permeability to control emission. And low permeability film is uh, this kind of film is difficult to add uh, gas, toxic gas is across. So uh, here's a, a slide about the plastic film. So this is a film, just a PE film. Uh, low permeable tarp includes uh, two types. One is a uh, wort impermeable film, and uh, another name is iron. So like um, Mac McDonald's has uh, three layers, and, uh, <laughs> and the outside is P, and the middle is uh, somehow like a nylon. Film. So this this uh, middle <coughs> might try to stop fumigant emission, and. Uh, Recent year, some of 2009, another tarp named the TIF, totally impermeable film. Uh, the Big Mac, this uh, five layer, sometimes uh, seven layer. Because uh, so far, uh, the problem you feel, sounds uh, the performance not that uh, ideal. We believe because uh, the middle part will be break after big machine to apply the tarp. So this one so far is uh, quite good. I will show some. Uh, this is the, just uh, some uh, previous data from our work. The two side uh, Oxnard field trial. And they introduced Oxnard is a very important area to produce uh, strawberry in the uh, South Korean coastal area. And the fumigant, the drip fumigation with the 1 3 d and the CP. Uh, the formula is the uh, inline. Uh, application depth is uh, 2 inch, 5 centimeter. And uh, the application rate is uh, 300 part. The bed size is 
12 inch as a height and 42 inch wide. And uh, this study we can so, uh, say very clear is a chemical emission value is quite high and other P can up to 400 microgram per square meter per second. And uh, for the CP can up to 100. So CP, uh, this, this kind of CP is uh, easy uh, degraded soil, so it's, uh, it's why they are lower. Uh, the VRF tarping, the emission reduced like the peak value for the uh, field up to 200 for one 3D, and, uh, uh, like a 50 gram per square, uh, square meter per second is for the CP. And uh, emission from a furrow is not a big issue. I see the scale, maximum only four, and generally say quite low. And we also found uh, this is uh, the data about the fumigant concentration under the field, uh, right above the soil surface. And uh, other the PP field, the highest value is uh, like uh, 15 uh, microgram per cubic centimeter. But other the uh, VI is almost double. So the low permeable film really works. But uh, generally, the data so the emission quite high from the back, not from the forum. Another study is uh, also in the Oxnard. This time, the fumigate applied through the shake injection. So, applies the soil, uh, fumigate directly uh, in the deeper soil, like 30 centimeters. So, for this, this trial, the major target is try to compare the new, new film, TRF, uh, compared with the uh, standard PU film. So, uh, the fumigate rate is uh, 280 pounds per acre. And the formula is uh, 50, so 50% was 3D and 50% uh, CP. There is a trend, I uh, use more CP than uh, was 3D because uh, uh, CP has a short life. So after apply, they degrade quick. So we believe they'll have less environmental compared to was 3D. And then uh, uh, study, there's a very exciting result. The uh, field uh, covers the uh, uh, the field covered by the tarp only uh, for six days. During this six days, <coughs> the, TF, the scale is uh, like uh, 40, so almost uh, no emission. But uh, for the P field, uh, compared to the previous slide, low, but uh, still we can find 30 microgram per meter per second for the one three D and the CP. <coughs> The interesting thing is uh, right, when the top was cut, like here, as here, the, there is a surge of uh, image. The reason is uh, we cut the top too. This is quite risky. If the top cut really for the worker, for example, they will get trouble. And, uh, especially for the TIF, the value is uh, almost up to 250. Also, I think uh, the TIF really works. And the fumigant concentration under the top of the soil surface uh, in the TF field, the concentration much higher than the P. The reason is uh, other than because the fumigant uh, emitted. So, uh, but uh, TF can hold the fumigant, so this reason why it's so high. Actually, I have data about uh, the uh, uh, we measure the soil gas, the whole soil profile from the top to the 35 centimeter. And uh, we found right above the injection line, the 30 centimeter, the fumigant distribute in the ERF field, they distribute uniform and also with very high concentration. So assuming if the big film can achieve the target for the plateau, that to me, if use a TRF, maybe we can reduce the fumigant rate. So this is good for farmer, they can save some money. Also good for the environment, because less fumigant use and 
surely less emission. And, uh, and uh, after this, we have uh, several other uh, trials, all related uh, flat, flat field with uh, broadcast shrink fumigation. And so far, no any data on the wristband. And uh, just a nice uh, three in the uh, another state, Florida, we had uh, one field trial. And uh, this time, uh, we work on the wristband. But the fumigate applies a shake injection. It's a light and deep. And the fumigate rate is lower. It's 134 pounds. And bed size is 9 inch high and 8 inch wide. For this scenario, fumigate is applied deeper than the bed height. And uh, we found, again, BIF, the fumigate emission from, from the bed is so quite low. The uh, scale only 0 0.4, so they even lower than 0 0.1 micrograms square meter per second. But the problem, the emission from the photo become very high. It's easy to understand because the film can apply deeper and they easily to uh, diffuse side and come, come out of this peak. So, all the three tires do need some uh, so if applied fumigate uh, use the current shallow shallow depths the emission will be because uh, the fumigate accumulate right under the top but uh, if applied fumigate deep like uh, the uh, the even bad maybe the emission from the fog high so this tire, I got idea, and fortunately we got so we could do some test. So the this is a hypothesis regarding my uh, my project. It's a use of tarpin and also drip uh, deep fumigate. So this is a um, about the PE film with shallow injection and uh, shallow dripping. So fumigate emission we already see quite high, from four is low, and also fumigant district should be poor because uh, most of it will stay in the top layer. But of course, the pest control is poor. And uh, for plant growth, they are okay. Uh, because in many cases, the field is, is uh, unlike is, uh, really the pest problem happen. The, yield will be effective, but uh, in a normal case, it's okay. And uh, for riches, it's easy because uh, just uh, like a play with tapes above the soil surface. And another is a TR. This uh, no any study so far, and uh, applied film can be used shallow depths. Uh, so we assume the emission from bed will be low because uh, this uh, top is a low permeability top. And also from forest should be low because the film can take long distance from the bed and then move out of the furrow. And the film can distribution should be good according to the study from the Oxnard side of nine. And the uh, plant growth should be okay and also pest control good. Uh, operation should be easy. Uh, this kind of new ideas uh, use a TIF uh, deep application. Uh, the deep application has a I try to apply fumigate in the middle for a reason. So, from the bad emission first, the reason is because the fumigate takes a long distance from the application point to the soil, uh, surface. So, I believe it should be. Less. And the emission from to the forum may be more than the, this one because they take a to distance to diffuse to the forum. The distribution should be better because the film can stay in the soil. And the pest control should be better like, uh, because uh, the film can uh, they stay in the soil and uh, different from the key film can be lost. And the uh, plant growth is good because uh, through strip tape, when the strawberry clear, the root will develop deeper. So this is a 
uh, writer seekers to uh, supply water and uh, the fertilizer to, to the and uh, operation maybe is not great. The objective of the, the trial is to de develop effective uh, fumigation strategy that uh, increase the uh, fumigation efficacy. The uh, efficacy is uh, improve the, the efficacy, also reduce the application rate. Sustain the reproduction and then reduce environmental pollution by studying the deep allegation with uh, top with uh, TIF. And uh, the trial was conducted in August from 16 to 30 uh, last year. Actually, it's a uh, rails very close to the Oxnard, uh, coastal area of uh, South California. The soil type is uh, slightly low. The bed is a uh, 40 inch wide and uh, 40 inch high. And the uh, bed center to center, so that, that's a uh, two neighbor side, is uh, 69 inch. Uh, this slide show how the works. So first, they use a tractor to build up the risk bed. And another machine try to uh, form the bed, make the bed is uh, uh, workable. And uh, then they will apply a full live fertilizer. It's a slow fertilizer. This fertilizer will support the whole season strawberry growth. And, uh, Install drip tape, and uh, this is a uh, little drip tape, and uh, I I'm not sure if it's clear enough. And uh, this is uh, the full drip tape. Uh, from this one, uh, actually not that difficult to apply the deeper drip. The trick includes uh, two shallow drip tape uh, without fumigation. Then compare with two shallow drip with a few. Full rate fumigation. Oh, by the way, the fumigate rate is uh, 300 per acre. And uh, two shallow drip tape with half rate. Then four by. Uh, this is uh, originally applied to five fumigate through the deeper drip. But uh, my collaborator, also Brewer, worry about uh, if the drip tape too deep, maybe the younger plant will suffer during the beginning. No water or no fertilizer. Okay, so I agree to use a full tape to satisfy them, also satisfy this project. And also the full drip line with a half rate. Uh, the last one is a two sh shallow drip line with a full rate out of the PE film. A deep drip line is up to seven inch, it's middle of bed height. And the spacing is 27 inch. And uh, right beneath uh, the shallow drip tape is uh, 2 inch deep. In total, we have uh, we investigated uh, 24 bags and uh, include 6 treatments. And uh, each treatment has a uh, 4 replicates. For the PE plot and the TRF plot, they're not uh, at the same location. The reason why uh, for the they, the farmer would like to use a TRF because that field, that location is quite uh, close to the residential area. It's uh, called the environmental regulation. They are not allowed to use the PE field unless they have very long distance uh, the bank, the buffer road. And for the PE field, the middle field, they can apply the PE. And, uh, the <coughs> fumigator is uh, deep applied, and uh, this time the formula again is more CP, now almost 57%, uh, uh, and uh, then it's 37% uh, for one 3D. And uh, the full rate is uh, 300, of course, the half rate is 150 pounds, and the uh, application is on August 16, over four hour period. And uh, this is the Two surface line, uh, no, the four drip line. This is the two surface drip line. Then the, before fumigation, 
and uh, right after fumigated, we have the uh, water flushing time. Uh, I believe in the beginning it's a two hour flushing, and after fumigation it's one hour flushing. After flushing, uh, use a sprinkler, apply water, uh, try to build the water seal. I remember in the beginning the slides so the you know, water try to uh, reduce the emission. The mainly concern is uh, reducing emission from four. Uh, the measurement include the uh, emission. Uh, we use a passive chamber and uh, only focus on uh, two treatment, the uh, full rate KIF treatment. Because uh, uh, for the PE, we already accumulated enough data, so we cannot include the PE. Um, that is uh, soil gas sampling. Uh, we try to figure out the fumigate distributed the, uh, throughout the whole soil profile. And the fumigate concentration are the top and above soil surface. Uh, soil temperature and the soil moisture, of course, also include the pest, like a pest and weeds. Uh, so far, weeds, no weeds, because uh, uh, the, the soil is quite clean. And the uh, future, maybe analysis, uh, soil neutral, uh, the plant growth and the year. Uh, this slide shows uh, our equipment. Uh, this chamber, the rod one, is uh, for measure the uh, fumigant emission from the bed. Uh, this one is a uh, measure emission from the forum. And uh, <coughs> during the certain period, we took a uh, uh, fumigate sample use a three. Uh, for the for the emission is uh, one hundred mil per time, and uh, this is a hobo to monitor the soil temperature in the whole bed, and uh, this is a deck goal to measure the soil moisture. And uh, here is a soil gas sampling probe and also AU2, the longer one. We have the different individual probe and measure different depths. And, and uh, here is uh, right near the soil probes, we bury the, uh, the sampling tube to, to measure the fumigant concentration other the field. And uh, before tarping, we also install the passive bags here is a, a near the edge of bed, and here is a set of bed. The reason is uh, we worry if this field no passage, so how can we know our treatment works or not? So we use uh, we already know here that we have certain amount of passage. So by depend on the uh, passage survival. Rate we can know uh, which which treatment works and which treatment doesn't work. Uh, for the plastic bag, we bury to the, all the treatment. All. And uh, this slide is so the soil gas and the AU, the uh, fumigant other top sampling. And uh, in the set of bed, we measure the three depths from 10 to 30 centimeter how the fumigant distributes. And also, near the edge of bed from 10 to 50 centimeter I try to fig figure out how the fumigant can distribute especially also the, through the soil profile and also we bury two probes in the forum at the near the bed to check how the fumigant can move outside and the depth is 10 to 20 centimeter and for the AU sample one is uh, near the Set of bed, one is near eight bed, and uh, one is the middle of the side bed, and uh, one is uh, close to the bottom of the bed. Uh, the sample processing and uh, fumigate analysis. After fumigate, uh, the fumigate will be captured in the kind of uh, tube, name is upper tube. So after Take the sample. We, in the beginning, we keep the sample under min minus 80 degree, try to avoid fumigate evaporation. 
and uh, before the extraction, we take out, then uh, transfer the, the middle, uh, the material is a tube to the small wire, like a 10 mil, then use a solvent, it's a hexane. The hexane can dissolve the fumigant. Then after sh shaking, then transfer the, the solution to the GC wire, then analysis with the GC, and we can get the concentration. Based on the GC value, we can calculate the emission flux. Uh, the GC value and also the, the chamber area and also timing, how long accumulates so much fumigate. Also, the, we can based on the emission flux, we can calculate the cumulative emission, also the name, another name is the total emission loss. And also the fumigant concentration, other film, and also fumigant use a uh, concentration use a soil profile. At last, we measure the residual fumigant use soil. The fumigant fit or fumigant degradation is equal to total apply reduced by emission loss, then reduced by the fumigant use gas at the end of the trial, and also residual fumigant. This residual fumigant is in the solid and the water phase. Uh, here, so some data. Uh, this means I take the emission data, uh, the sample. Uh, These two figures about the fumigant treat, treatment with uh, uh, a deeper application and this is a shallow application. We have so very clear. Uh, for the shallow application, the highest peak can up to 40 microgram per square meter per second. And uh, again, the CP is lower than the uh, 13D. But uh, with deeper application, it's reduced a lot. So uh, more than 50% reduced. And the uh, interesting thing is uh, emission from the both forum it's quite low. So in the beginning, we worry about the emission from the forum of the deep treatment will be high, but actually they are low. So it's very happy result. And uh, this uh, red arrow shows the, the point. Remember in the 2009 Oxnard trial, after talking the field for six days and cut the field, uh, cut the top, there is a surge emission. But this time, after top of the field for two weeks, and the emission flood, a little bit increased, but not that much. So we can say, in urgent case, if the farmer want to grow strawberry quickly, so maybe uh, two weeks, at least cover two weeks, should be good enough. So this data shows that deep fumigation is really works. And also, in general, remember the 2007 Oxnard trial with the risk of bed. That uh, fumigant emission up to three digits, the, the number here is only two digits. Two digit. That means the TRF also quite effective in the risk bed, not only in the broadcast flat field. And uh, this is a uh, fumigant concentration other field and all the other the four rate. So we have three rate of, uh, that's three treatment about the four rate of fumigation. It's a deep one, shallow one, other the TIF, and the shallow fumigation, other the PE. These three figures are about one three D, and these three figure about the CP. Uh, we can say other the TIF, the concentration is uh, a lot higher than the PE because uh, Again, the fumigant emission through the PE field. And uh, for the shallow application, the cartridge is higher than the deep. It's nature because the uh, fumigant applied shallower, so the cartridge should be higher. But this, so from this data again, we can know the TF really can hold the fumigant use bad. And uh, this one, I try to, I also show this one, the uh, PE film is a uh, full rate fumigant. 
And this I try to compare with uh, uh, TF drifted the half rate. So this is a deep drift, and this is a shallow drift. So you can say in the shallow drift, the thermic concentration under the tar even better or uh, similar to the P with four rate. And this slide here as an idea, maybe under the same scenario, the TF may be allowed to reduce the uh, application rate up to 50% of the current fumigation rate. But uh, to make that conclusion, it's too early. And I need the data called like the fumigate distribution in the soil profile and also pesticide. And unfortunately, we still we are working in lab. So this time, I couldn't bring that data for you. Uh, this is a summarize of the, all the chemical concentration in the different locations, like the top bed of the center and the bed edge, also the top, and the side and the bottom. So there is a very clear pattern. For example, the both top location, the fumigate distribution is relatively uniform. This is the average of all the two weeks data. And for the PE film, uh, look here is a uh, center, and then it's uh, the edge. Again, here is center is the uh, edge. Oh, this is the one 3D and this AP. So this data maybe can explain why the so far the pest control has a lot of problem in the set of bed and also in the shoulder of the bed. So because the uh, fumigate other P they in, in make so quick, so even no time to diffuse to the target area. And uh, for the KIF, the fumigate, because of KIF hold fumigate, so the fumigate can diffuse better. It's my opinion. And uh, also this, uh, this is a soldier at the bottom, a lot lower than the KIF. And uh, uh, here for the deep application, the fumigate concentration on the film is lower than the shallow. This doesn't mean this treatment is worse than the shallow because in this case, my explanation is uh, because fumigate applied deep, so they stay in the soil. So maybe in this case, the fumigate even, um, even distribute better because like, like I would have, we showed at uh, the beginning, the fumigate emit for the shallow TF and the compared to deep TF, they are more fumigated. So uh, maybe next time if you watch me again, I can bring that data to you. And the soil temperature, right at the bed surface, the soil temperature change daily, and related with the sunlight, and with a year radio for 14.5 to 44.9. This uh, the temperature measured uh, is uh, right on the bed surface. And uh, the deepest one is at uh, 45 centimeters. The temperature is relatively stable. You are reaching 27 to 30 centimeters. So actually, I average in each depth, the average value is more or less uh, around 30, 30 degrees. And the soil moisture data uh, scale and other calibration. So right after fumigation, a month later, the um, strawberry started to transplant it. So this is how the strawberry nursery looked like. And the farmer used a big machine to make hole. For each bed, there is a four row. Um, the Plating in testing is uh, 25,000 plant per acre. The, after uh, the transplantation take a lot of labor to work, all the labor work. Right after transplantation, the use a uh, sprinkler, also use a drip tape, apply water regularly to uh, support the plant growth. Also through the drip light, they can apply additional fertilizer. 
However, uh, we thought the dieback problem and uh, around 9 to 14 percent of plant uh, cannot survive in the DIF class. And uh, we figured out the reason uh, use the uh, it's a meter to check the EC value other the uh, near the diet plant areas quite high on the TIF part. So we assume maybe that is the reason. And at the moment we take a sample and try to analyze it for the detail. And it uh, cannot explain the past problem. Should be not a past problem. And this problem mainly happens in the TIF plot, because these two plots are very far each other. Uh, this is a plot, how the plot die, plot look like, and uh, this is how the plot suffer in soil. And after two months after the transplantation, we try to analyze all the plot growth parameters, include the plot cover per bed, I use this camera. And also we use ruler measure the canopy size. And also we measure stomatal conductors and resistance. This uh, parameter to show how the plant grow healthy or poor. And also we measure the leaf greenness with the span. And the data for the plant cover in general for all the treatments there is no difference statistically, but uh, there is a pattern or track the PE plot has a higher plant cover because uh, like uh, what I said, uh, this PE plot is free of uh, salinity problem, but the TIF plot they suffer salinity problem. And the plant canopy size, I only measured the uh, TF plot. Uh, so far, no difference, and, uh, regardless of fumigation or not, compared with control. So I, I hope next time I can bring some new data for this. And uh, for the stomatal conductors and the resistors, this parameter is uh, so uh, if this value is high, that to me, the plant grows healthy. And if this value is low, that to me, the plant suffers something. And this is the, another parameter that is uh, inverse to this. And we can say for the PE film, other the PE film, the plant grows quite healthy. And uh, other the TIF, not that much. This is a uh, two mass data. And the greenness index, and uh, for all the six treatments, there are no difference. Uh, the greenness, this parameter actually is uh, somehow an indicator for the plant nutrition, like uh, if the plant have enough, enough nitrogen. So in this field, the farmer apply enough fertilizer, so the nitrogen shouldn't be a problem, so it's why, no difference. Uh, your summary, and uh, the TRF can retake fumigant more effectively mm -hmm. than PE. And uh, the fumigant can distribute more uniformly in the TRF top the fat than the PE fat. Half-rate fumigant other the TRF may achieve the same pest control result as a full rate. Uh, again, so far I cannot uh, say this is a conclusion, just to summarize my previous uh, data. And uh, low emission was found from the TRF top field. This is very good. And uh, uh, the trace level emission was found from so the follow emission is not a concern. And uh, with a deep application can provide an excellent emission control target compared to shallow application, even other TIF.
The film case might distribute better with a deep application than shallow because uh, film case mostly retain in the soil. And the post film case effect is not significant at the moment for the early stage of uh, strawberry growth. And uh, because maybe because the soil condition, soil property play a very important role in the strawberry production. So it's why the, so far the PE film has a better plant growth compared to the TI uh, The up, outgoing analysis uh, film, uh, future measurement. This is a soil distribution in soil profile. A residual fumigant in the soil and the soil moisture. All these samples are uh, ready and uh, we only need the uh, lab work. Also, I need to continue to uh, measure the plant growth and the yield and also the pest man, uh, measurement throughout the season. So far, we already uh, collected the buried bag of the pest data, uh, the sample and the lab still works. And uh, also we try to do something more and we try to figure out if the deep drip apply water and fertilizer can further improve the plant growth yield and the soil nutrient. <coughs> the acknowledgement to the funding uh, also the agency like uh, University of Arkansas and also Walmart. Also the to the grower Steam Imato and Glen Imato. Uh, they in total that field is uh, two hundred uh, acres. It's quite huge. And also <coughs> their workers provide the field and the equipment and also field pre preparation. Also the company is uh, CPS crop production service provider fumigation service. And uh, of course, this work depends on a lot of personal help and uh, uh, technicians and students from the UC Davis as uh, also ESDA ARS give a lot of help, not only in the field, also in the lab. And also the big state stakeholder, Strawberry Commission, Title is another big fumigation company. Yeah. This is what I have, and uh, if you have any questions, yes, Doctor, I have a question. Uh, I know you, this uh, study that you've done is really some good information for people in Florida and California because you're saying the deep application is the best thing. Most of our beds here are three to five inches. You're uh -huh. suggesting seven inches for that, some of those tapes. Uh -huh. uh, we're most of us don't have that much much soil to work with, uh -huh. and uh, a lot of us don't have the availability of a new kind of plastic, the five layer, whatever big mac plastic that we're talking about. Uh -huh. Most of us don't have the availability of that. For sustainability, we're looking for things that we don't have to bring into our farms. We're looking about. Maybe the first thing that you mentioned was, and I thought this is going to be really something for me because you mentioned mighty mustard as a fumigant. Uh -huh. And this is something that I'm interested in. And I appreciate all the work you've done on this right here too. That's, that's going to be a lot of help for a lot of people. But I don't know about for us right here in this middle Tennessee area because we don't have 14 inches to drop that, <laughs> yeah. drop that uh, drip tape in. So yeah. what, what do we do here? More about mighty mustard or some kind of fumigant that we can turn on. Uh, first of all, the fumigation, I think, in a long term, maybe a fumigation is not uh, sooner or later fumigation will totally fit out. So, in my opinion, uh, develop non chemical alternatives should be a solution, especially for, for your bed, it's not that high, and, uh, not that wide. Maybe you can try that way. Also, the fumigation solution like uh, the mustard the after growth that kind of crop then uh, 
mixed with soy because of that kind of crop they also produce we call the DMDS the kind of chemicals. Uh, you can <coughs> sorry <coughs> you can smell that kind of it's a very bad smell but actually that is uh, somehow like fumigation fumigate but they are name is uh, biofumigation and uh, yeah this uh, are you doing more good. research with this? With the mighty mustard or other crops for fumigants, are you doing more research for that? Uh, so far, my major target focus on fumigation. And you've done a good job. Huh? Yeah. Sure people in California yeah. Yeah. Also, they have uh, another technique that they name it ASD or ADS. Try to build up the the whole soil conditions are full of water. By this kind of situation, they can kill the pest. So this kind of condition lasts for a period of time. So this is a, uh, another uh, group in the California, uh, University of California, I believe, startup groups. They have this kind of studies. Okay, I apologize greatly. Uh, please forgive me.